Yes, in the yard, of course, this over 2,400. I was 280 to 360. Uh, is a considerable drift, Maxi. Deniloquin, Denil steady. Five sixes back to 550, but the money's been for Bedford Square. Sixes into 440. Here in a nibble at a price for number 10, Contrition. 21 down to $13. There she is, number 10. Mm. Uh, so Iowa has been easy. 280 out to 340. And now out of further 20 cents to $3.60. But I'm happy to go with him. He has got himself all hot and bothered, but that's totally expected. He's been pretty calm as he's been escorted down to the start with the pony, but he's still hot. Um, two to beat four. Got Danilo Quinn in for second. Then Rogue Bear number one. Just loved his, his presence in the yard. He's a mm. beautiful horse, isn't he? Um, and number nine, Bedford Square, as you say. It's, it's the best we've seen her. Um, she's had the 42 days between. Looks as if she's put on a little bit of condition, so she looked good. Two, four, one and nine. Yeah, I think one, two, four and nine were definitely the the good lookers from the yard. I am sticking with Iowa. I know that he does get messy. That's just him. It's what he does, and it's incredibly humid uh, here today. But it's more so about, you know, getting some cheap sectionals um, in this race. So look to have Nick, his knickers in a knot a bit there behind yeah. the barriers. Uh, but he's just a high-spirited sort of stayer, isn't he? Yeah. He's a six-year-old now by Galileo, and he's one of quite, only a few horses here that have won over this distance. Mm. He's won over 2,500. Yeah, that's right. He's got great stamina, so I'm sticking with him even with the drift. All right, let's have a look. Any further drifts? Well, he's actually just come in 10 cents to 350 now, Iowa. So we went 280 to 360, back uh, to 350. So he's still your favourite. And that is over to Dinner, uh, sorry, Bedford Square, Daniloquin and Road Bear. All right, let's get upstairs to Josh Fleming for the call of race two. The move up. So Tab Fitz on to your 340 Iowa. Bedford Square's been the best try down to 420. Daniloquin 550. Road Bear's at six. He's been adrift of the bear. And it looks like they've all moved in and the light turned on. Race number two, the Derby Star 2400. They're racing, walking out with the Niliquim. The inside Silver Warrior, also Iowa, began well and rolling forward as Rogue Bear won from the outside. Bedford Square is handy and Sir Lord, the deepest runner, followed further back by Bader on the inside of Contrition. Drifting a long way back as Harbell outside is the Niliquim. The fence now, second last length and a half to tack his lad up the rear. In front, Iowa, second Rogue Bear, third Silver Silver Warrior, Sir Lord's outside Bedford Square, followed by Contrition. Bader's on the rails and further back to Harbell outside Daniloquim and Tackley's later as a length and a half away. Up the railway side here in front, Iowa by three parts and second Rogue Bear, third Silver Warrior. Two and a half, Sir Lord outside Bedford Square. Contrition's on the outside of Bader. A length and a half to Harbell, Daniloquim and still last of all is Tackley's lad, the best part of nine or ten lengths off the lamp lighter. In front, Iowa, second still Rogue Bear, third the inside of Silver Warrior. A length and a half, Sir Lord, followed by Bedford Square on the inside of Contrition. Then coming Bader, further back in the field to Harbell outside Daniloquin, and still last of all is Tappy's Lad, nine or ten lengths off the leader. So Iowa's in front up the 1,200 metres mark, a length by length and a quarter from second Rogue Bear and third Silver Warrior. Sir Lord, Bedford Square, Contrition, followed by Bader. A long way back, Harbell, Daniloquin, a length and a half to Tappy's Lad. They've got 1,000 metres left to run, and Iowa's in front for young Graham by length and a quarter. Second Rogue Bear, third still Silver Warrior, followed by Sir Lord on the outside of Bedford Square. Further back to Contrition, Bader's on the inside, Harbell third, last one further back to Daniloquim and Tapia's Lad as they swing down the side. 700 metres left to run. In front, Iowa, second Rogue Bear, two lengths away, third Sir Lord passing Silver Warrior. Bedford Square's away from the rail, wide routes Contrition as Silver Warrior drops right out, Harbell followed by Bader, Daniloquim and tack his lad at the 450 quickly. Rogue Bear looms up on the outside of Iowa. A length away, third Bedford Square running home down the outside of Sir Lord and further back to Contrition. Rogue Bear, the outside of Iowa. Here comes Bedford Square running home well and they're well clear from Sir Lord. Further back to Contrition, but out wide. Bedford Square has reins up and taken over. Iowa, the inside, are dying on the run as Rogue Bear, but Bedford Square's in front coming right away and Bedford Square. Bedford Square's one from Iowa. 
Iowa Road there, followed from the back by Hardbell, Sir Lord Contresham, Tap his lad, Daniloquin Bader, and Silver Warrior has dropped out to finish at the rear. Bedford Square, all too good. Gee, good training performance from Jack Bruce. Hey, so that's a great effort. Uh, winning 2,400 metres. Was uh, given a lovely ride by Ben Thompson, put into a nice, cosy, soft position. Produced at the right time and is able to get by the leaders, Iowa and Rogue Bear. And uh, she's put a bit of margin on them over the final part. As Bertie pointed out in the yard, she hadn't seen this mare look so good. She had the synthetic hoof filler on, but she was right on song today. A six-year-old mare by Tavistock. She was striking at one win every 10 starts, so she's broken through today. Perhaps the confidence boost that she needs going forward. Iowa, Gallant again, he just gets a little bit keen, doesn't he, for 2,400-metre racing, but to his credit, he's battled on strongly. So too Rogue Bear under the 61 and a half, Bernie, and Harbell doing best of the rest. Yeah. This 1800 metre race, Fleur de Monde, a very solid favourite. Good money for her now, 370, Maxie. Yeah, and at the 1800, it, it, that's where the, the barriers are. Turn out of a straight. It pays to draw inside. And I think she'll end up on the rails. I think she'll end up ahead of Macombo, who's in gate one. And I think she'll settle reasonably handy. And uh, I think she's the way to go. And the market says that she's, she's ready. Uh, 13, Yangari to stay on strongly, binding the likely leader, and then Mock Taffy, who should get it sort of comfy today in a one off position. I'm playing Karuto each way here. Thought he looked equally as good, perhaps lightened off just a fraction, which is good to see given he's got to run a strong 1800 today. Just each way for me, Karuto. Here's Josh. Yeah, Gary Fleur de Monde and Binding all began well. Why we drink and no going back is going forward very, very quickly. And no going, no going back in front now by two from Fleur de Monde and Binding on the outside. Further back to Yangari. Three wide. Why we drink and drifting back. McCambo on the inside of Mock Taffy. They're clear from Clyde Carudo. A length and a half to Chad Sonati. So fired up in front. No going back by a length and a half. Likewise, Binding second. Why we drink going forward three wide. Fleur de Monde. And Yangari. They're clear from next is Macambo. Mock Taffy on the outside. Two and a half lengths to Caruto. Clyde a length and a half to Chase Sonati. So no going back in front from second now. Why we drink and third binding. Fleur de Monde in fourth and Yangari fifth the outside. Two further back to Macambo. Mock Taffy a length and a half to Clyde. Caruto's on the fence and still last of all is Chad Sonati. Been good speed on here. No going back in front down the side by two. Second, why we drink up to the 7.50. A length and a half to Binding. Fleur de Monde and Yangari scrubbed along, followed by Macambo, Mock Taffy, Clyde, Caruto, Chad Sonati. 600 metres left to run. No going back in front by a length and a half. And second, why we drink and Binding going forward three wide. Fleur de Monde is fourth and next along there is Mock Taffy, Caruto. 
Rude Eyes banking ground on the rail and Clyde right towards the outside. Yangari not travelling well. 400 metres left to run. No going back has got plenty of company. Carudo driving through. Binding on the outside. One from the outside. Fleur de Mont. Clyde is the deepest and further back to Mock Taffy. But Carudo's in front. Fleur de Mont trying hard. Squeezing home late. Chase Sonati. Carudo's in front from Chase Sonati. Lunging. Got up, Chase Sonati, right on the line as one from Carudo. Third will be Fleur de Mon. Then binding Clyde Mokhtafi, Yangari, McCambo, Why We Drink and No Going Back. What a great ride from Boris Thornton. Chase Sonati scorching home late between them. And Niles Carudo on the peg. And Fleur de Mon back in third. Um, Chase Sonati has got him. And then Fleur de Mon presented at the right time. And then back in fourth was Binding. And then Clyde, who was held up at the back, coming to the outside. Well, Carudo under Jake Malloy was kicking, kicking. But Chase Sonati has dived through in the middle late. And he's got up to score. Now trained by Scott Morrissey, written by Boris Thornton. Well, there was a little bit of an issue a couple hundred metres after the start with poor old Why We Drink. I thought he was going to sell out again. He might have caught a heel, not too sure. But um, the honours here are with Chase and Artie. He's back in the winner's circle. He's going to be, you know, a really nice horse. He went around in a number of stakes races during the winter as a two-year-old from memory. Never quite went on with it, but... He had a win last preparation and fourth up today. He gets a win. Bernie, we're looking for him trying to secure a run and he, he managed to eventually get through. You were cheering Caruto.
40, Maxie. Maybe they can't entice any more people in at $1.35. Yeah, just, uh, just pushing out on the uh, official price there. But there has been support for Zoo Shack, 18 down to $11. And are they specking anything else here? Quality times? Quality times? to 12 mm -hmm. um, And shopping is free for second favourite, solid at five. But I think this fellow will win. I, as I said, the key is to him just relaxing through the first two or 300 metres. He's been really strong at his 1,400 metre wins. He's had two of them here. And last time at Doomben over the 1350, he's actually pacing it with some of our really good short course sprinters early. Mm. And then uh, strong late, but Tamerlane got that beautiful run through and, and won. This guy getting past Sue style late into second. So really strong form. He's a lovely horse and he's nice and quiet in the yard and going around to the start. So hopefully... He's nice and quiet when he comes out of the gates and he should win. Shopping a spree. He's going to have to give him five or six length start, I think. I think that'll be a bridge too far. Nevertheless, I think he could possibly make a race of it. Um, uh, shopping a spree. Then I've got number 10, quality time because of the map. And then London Banker starts to get a little bit thin, but he's usually reliable to run on quite well. What I like about this race, Maxie, is um, it's a classic example of longevity for most of these racehorses. The top three, one, two and four, have all won half a million plus. They've pretty much won one in four times that they presented at the races. Just an extraordinary effort, isn't it? They've been looked after. They're still here as eight and nine-year-olds racing. Yeah. Um, and their connections have had some great times. We've seen it. How you want to which uh, Toowoomba Cup, didn't he? And London yep. Bankers won cups even during the carnival. He's, he's measured up at a pretty high level. Mm. Even Trevelyan, you know, he's been going around for years for Chris Marr and bobs up every preparation and wins a race. So they're yes. loving the stable life, quite obviously. Yeah. Um, They've been looked after, you yep. know, they're sound. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But even these mares down there, this Ratani interests me a lot. She went around in some Group 1 sprints in New Zealand. She had a couple of years off. I'm not sure, I mean, with that pedigree, she's out of an unbridled song mare. One would have thought that she might have gone to stud. Uh, Ratani? Maybe she did. Mm. We don't know. May not have been. Well, two they years may, off. I think there's a good story there behind her. <laughs> we'll have to find out. She's won nine races and a couple hundred thousand in New Zealand mm. is um, is pretty good. And Tara Jasmine's race, she won nine races as well, almost 300,000. There's been, been a real injection of prize money in New Zealand. Have you noticed? No. It sort of seemed like it was struggling there a few years ago. I was talking to Graham Rogerson actually at Magic Millions and he was rattling off all these big money races. So okay. um, it's been a real turnaround, which is fabulous for New Zealand racing. Yes. They lose a lot of their horses to Hong Kong. Yes. Um, because of the prize money structure in the past. But that's 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 good positive news. Yeah. Shopping a spree, what's he doing? Um, TikTok queen, she, one wonders what might have been in the previous race. <laughs> we'll always have to wonder. I'm not sure what they'll do with her. She'll, well, she'll have to go back to the trials, obviously. But they're very clever racehorses. Some of them that don't like, you know, going in race day, go in no problem at the trials. At the trials, yeah. Tyressa, she's the one that's got the better mm. of them, hasn't she? Um, and they're usually mares. <laughs> what are you saying, Max? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's because they're clever and they can make up their own mind. Yes, yes indeed. Absolutely. Yes, so you boys are more compliant. All right. Well, let's let's hope that this uh, Freedom Rally yeah, can take us home a winner. I think he's probably the end result of some big multis, ar multis around Australia. I'm sure. Here's Josh. Freedom Rally, two's on favourite. So... And they've all moved in. The light now turned on. Race number 10. All in. Gates open racing. They've jumped as one. Freedom Rally's going forward with Ratani out wider and Cedar Power handy as well. Likewise, Zoo Shack shopping a spree, drifting back quality time outside Trevelyan, followed along then by Tara Jasmine and last of all, London Banker. So Freedom Rally's in front now by a length and second in a seat of power. Third, Ratani, followed further back by Zoo Shack shopping a spree. Quality time, Trevelyan, Tara Jasmine and London Banker. So in front, Freedom Rally by a length and second is Ratani, third seat of power. Not much speed about here, followed by Zoo Shack shopping a spree, quality time. 
and they're clear from Trevelyan on the inside of Tara Jasmine. London back is a length and a half away. So Fred and Rally obtains a lovely run in front, led by three parts here. Second, Ratani, third. A seat of power on the inside of Zushak at the 7.50. Further back, shopping a spree, quality time. Uh, then we've got Trevelyan, followed there by Tara Jasmine on the outside. And London Bankers last of all. So Fred and Rally, 600 metres left to run. No excuses in front by next. Second, Ratani. Sharing third, Zushak outside seat of power. Shopping a spree, quality time. Tara Jasmine, Trevelyan and London Banker. 400 metres left to run. And Fred and Rally clicked up in front by length and a half. Second, Ratani, followed by Zushak. Working home fairly, shopping a spree. Wider out, Tara Jasmine. Fred and Rally, 200 metres left to run in front. Lifting Zushak the inside, but Fred and Rally's in front from Zushak up the 100. Fred and Rally going too well. Two lengths in front now. Fred and Rally. Fred and Rally's one from Zushak shopping a spree. Ratani, Tara Jasmine, London Banker, quality time, seat of power and Trevelyan. Freedom Rally, too good, number nine. Never re never really in doubt there. Ben Thompson for Tony Gollan. Controlled the tempo in front, had a perfect run. Dashed away and has won it from Zoo Shack, who uh, ran well. It was game in defeat and shopping a spree third. And Ratani will be in fourth, number 14. So, ninth. In front and... He was lucky that nothing got up and really annoyed him there on the pace. Zushak has done a good job to come from off the speed. Shopping a spree jump well for Jimmy Orman. Settled fifth, gets third. And Ratani, she was the one that took that second spot. Um, the the nine-year-old mare from New Zealand, she's whacked away and picked up fourth spot there. Um, number 15, Tara Jasmine's work term okay. And then London Banker. Um, just whacking away there. But all honours with the winner, number nine, Freedom Rally. First go past 1,400 metres, clicked up at the top of the straight. Took him a little while to get away from them, but he did where it counted, putting a bit of a gap on them over the last 100 metres. Now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to Bernie now to get a quick interview maybe with Tony. No, in fact, we won't. We have run out of time at the end of the 10 race card here at Eagle Farm. So I think the majority of part is pretty happy with that. They would have anchored this guy in, a, in wind multis everywhere and he's been able to get the money. Freedom Rally, that's his sixth victory at start number 11. And he was the hot favourite returning $1.55. Well, that's it from Eagle Farm today. Thank you to Bernie and to the team here at the track, we hope you found your fair share of winners. It's good night for now from Eagle Farm.